Good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in to Chapter 9, Payroll. Uh, obviously, this is going to be an important topic because everyone wants to get paid, likes getting paid, and we should probably figure out how to actually calculate the payroll. So, the first half of the chapter, the first learning unit, actually describes six different ways to get paid. Um, but before we get into that, remember, don't forget, you'll need to know your terms for the chapter. Um, there's normally about two, three, four questions from each chapter on terms, uh, specifically in true-false format or multiple choice. So it's important to know the vocabulary that we use. So again, gross pay over time, uh, straight piece rate, the FICA, the FUTA, the SUTA, the net pay, the federal income tax, state income tax. So be familiar with that so you know if you get asked a question how to respond to the vocab. But uh, we're going to work some problems within each of these six different ways to pay. Um, and then we'll get into deductions and what's important about that. So the hourly rate and overtime pay. Well, if you're not salaried or if, if you're an hourly worker, by law, over 40 hours, you should get time and a half, uh, which is 1.5. And so it asks us in the book um, to calculate, and we're actually going to be doing practice problem Learning Unit 1-9-1 on page uh, 239, and it says that Jill works 54 hours at $12 an hour. Um, what is her overtime and gross pay? So we know that 40 hours is what's allowed. So 40 hours is going to be at $12, so 14 hours are going to be at time and a half. Well, what's half of 12? 6. So add 6 and 12 together, you get 18. So 14 hours at $18 an hour and 40 hours at $12 an hour. So we add those together and you get 480 for the regular time pay. And then to do the math for the overtime pay, it's 14 times 18. $252. So add that together and you get 732 is her pay. So Jill's pay is 732. So how do you calculate your hourly? Figure out how many, if you max out to 40, then that's what's going to be times by your regular rate. And however many overtime hours you have times time and a half. Now you, if you work in a factory or if you work on a per unit basis, there's the straight piece rate pay, which kind of incentivizes doing more work, uh, more pieces done, than the number of units you have times the actual price that they pay per unit. I think in the uh, example they used dolls and, and Johnny made 69 or 96 cents a doll. So another main way is a differential pay scale. So it's, it can be done on either per unit or by amount of sales, and we'll get there with variable commission sale. But let's do homework number 9-8, and it states that basically they, these are the different rates. For the first 1,000 units, it's a $0.03 cent per unit rate. For uh, 1,001 to 1,600, it's a 5 cent rate, and anything above 1,600 units is at a 7 cent rate. So we want to calculate what that's going to be at 1,925 units. What pay would that be? Well, we know we have 1,000 units at 3 cents, so that's going to get us our $30. So it gets paid $30 for that. And then we got another 600 units at 5 cents, and that's going to be another $30. And then we have, so 1,600, 325 units at the 7 cent rate is 22.75. So add these together, you get 82.75 is what you will get paid for producing 1,925 units. So another way is a straight commission draw, uh, which means you make 100% commission, but then you've already actually had an advance on your paycheck, which is what they call the 
the draw. So it says in practice problem number two, your, uh, for the month your sales were $210,000 and you get 8% commission. So 210,000 times 0 0.08. So you get $16,800, but you've already had a $4,000 advance or a draw. So your pay will actually be only $12,800 because you've already taken that $4,000 out. Now the variable commission scale is the same way here as your per unit. It's just on your sales amount. So let's turn um, and do number three. Uh, practice problem 9-1A and it said Bob receives a $1,200 monthly salary so we got no matter what he gets $1,200 then it says he gets 1% uh, for $9,000 to $12,000 3% for $12,000 to $20,000 and 5% from $20,000 to $40,000 more than $40,000 he gets 80% or 8% so Let's do this. So his first three thousand dollars, he gets four percent, which would be thirty dollars. His next eight thousand dollars, because that's that twenty or that twelve to twenty, he gets um, three percent. One percent on the first one, three percent on the second one. So one instead of four, that makes sense. So he's going to get $240. On the next 20,000, because that's the 20,000 to 40,000, he gets 5%, which is equal to $1,000. And then he made 60,000, which is 20,000 more than 40,000. So another 20,000 times 8% which is $1,600. So we add this side together, and we add our 1,200 together. So this would be 2,870 plus our 1,200. So he makes $4,070. So we kind of combined the salary plus commission, but we did a, a variable commission scale on that one. Now the second part of this chapter was calculating how much deductions should be taken out of your paycheck. And what's really important is to pay attention to Table 9.1 and Table 9.2. Um, when you fill out your w, W2, your W4s uh, from at the very beginning of working somewhere, you'll write how many allowances you have. And this comes into play now depending on what tax will be taken out. So what's important is to know that Social Security is at a rate of 6.2%, uh, all the way up to $106,000 and $106,800,000. Um, and Medicare is on unlimited. So Warren Buffett pays 1.45 Medicare for however many million billions he makes in a year, whereas Social Security stops at $106,800. So, we will calculate uh, the practice problems on page uh, 244. We'll do number one, then we'll do number two, and help you understand how to work that. Now, it says that Joyce makes, uh, what does Joyce make? Let me turn to the right page. Joyce makes $10,000, and she has one claim, one deduction, she's single. Before the payroll, her cumulative earnings were $106,300. Calculate her federal by percentage method. So what we have to understand is that she is only $500 from the base. So what she's going to pay in Social Security is actually only going to be $500, because that's... Um, 106, 800. She's already paid 106, 300. So there's a difference of 500. So to get Social Security, it's only 500 times 0 0.062. It's going to calculate Social Security. But before we get there, we want to understand 
uh, what else do we have to calculate? So if she makes $10,000 a month, we're going to turn to table 9-1 and 9-2. And I'm going to see that one person on a monthly average is going to have $304.17 on your withholding. So $304.17. So that should leave her with $0.83, uh, 9,693, no, 95, right? And I'll double check real quick. So we know that's how much is now accessible to be taxed. So we look into our monthly table and we see that she is over 7,025 but less than 14,400. So what we do, and that says that it will be 1395 and 80 plus. 28% of whatever is over. Okay, so now we have to subtract 7,025 to figure out how much she's over. So she's over $2,670.83. So we need to times that by 28% or 0.28. which equals 747.83 and we need to add that to the 13.95.80 so she will pay 21.43 and 63 cents is what she'll pay for federal and her Medicare is going to be just um, 10,000 times 0.145, which would be $145. Yeah, $145. So this is her federal income tax. This would be her Social Security. $31.50. And her Medicare, $145. So that's how we kind of do the employee side of things. Let's figure out the employer. Now remember, your employers, uh, because of the FUTA, the unemployment tax, and the state unemployment tax, it's only on each employee up to the first $7,000 that they make. So when we look at problem number two, it says they have three employees making $200, $800, and $950. So as they've worked the first quarter, figure out how much unemployment tax it will be. And it tells us that the state unemployment tax is 5.1%, which is different than what most states at 5.4. And remember that the FUTA is 6.2, but you get that 5.4% credit. So it's about a 0.8% or 0 0.008. And so we'll use that calculations for here. So. 200 times 13, because it's quarterly, quarter is 13 over 52 weeks, it's $2,600. Now 800 times 13 is $10,400. And 950 times 13 is $12,000. Three hundred and fifty. Well, remember, we only get to use the first seven thousand. So we have all of twenty six hundred, whereas this can only be seven thousand, and this is only going to be seven thousand. So we actually have fourteen thousand, sixteen thousand six hundred. Now we're going to times that by this the state. Oh five one. So sixteen six hundred times point oh five one is eight hundred. And forty-six dollars and sixty cents. So this would be the Suda, and then the food, uh, federal unemployment tax would be sixteen hundred 
times 0 0.008. which is 132.80. So, oh, that kind of makes chapter 9 a little bit simpler or easier. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.